You're listening to In Time Sessions with Nathaniel Borden on Islington Radio. Right. Peen. Hello. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for having me. That's all right. You're more than welcome. Um, this is called In Time Sessions mm -hmm. with myself, Nathaniel Borden, uh, with Islington Radio. Second show. So Ooh. I myself am still very new to all this jazz. Mm -hmm. But I think what we'll do is we'll just get straight into it and we'll just ask about yourself and what's going on. So I rightly so listen to your songs that I oh could great, find a, a handful <laughs> and, yeah. a, and a good few times as well. Okay. Oh. Just just to get familiar yeah. with. Um, very ethereal, a Ooh. atmospheric. That's a new one. Never had yeah. Before. I love the repetition that you use, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which I think is is very underused in my honest mm -hmm. opinion with a lot of people. I got sort of hosier, Florence and the Machine vibes. Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You, you're a little bit upset. You, 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 <laughs> That's <laughs> you, right. You, this is so funny. <laughs> you've, been, you've been let down a little bit. Oh, yeah. A bit disappointed, mm. you know. Um, yeah. And, uh, but I think I think you've got a good vibe. But like, I like the vibe. Yeah, I like the vibe, oh, like vibe you're throwing out. Cool. So I, I would like to know, uh -huh. um, we spoke a little bit off camera just now about you know how you this is quite new to you all of this mm -hmm. sort of writing songs and, and all that mm -hmm. so why why have you now thought or decided to put energy and effort into mm -hmm. writing songs that's my first question mm -hmm. to you well it's, it's kind of funny because um i always wanted to sing my mom always jokes around that i came out singing um because it was always a thing in my life which is quite interesting because my parents aren't really musical they're right. both not in the industry not doing anything really creative mm -hmm. as a job or my mom just started painting so a little bit of creative energy in there i actually come from a family of on my dad's side of painters and then on my mom's side it's like a far far away cousin had like a jazz trio apparently right. so there is bits and bobs in there but not in my direct okay. circle i would say um and i was always writing short stories as a mm. kid and um i translated actually so i'm dutch i grew up in a small seaside town near amsterdam and it's quite common actually um for dutch people to translate songs so i translated it a lot at a certain point of course when english was good enough i started translating those songs to dutch or sometimes the other way around just as mm. an exercise and like I said, writing, and when I was a teenager, I wrote poems because I had so many ideas mm. about philosophy and about politics mm. and just as you do, I guess, as a teenager. So mm. I just wrote all these things down and never really thought of songwriting. And I was like, I'll, ju I'll, I'll, re I'll, um, I'll make a poetry book one day. That's what I thought, actually. Right. And then I got, um, when I was 10 years old, into musical theater because my mom was a huge musical theater fan. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, it looks so cool. You can tell stories, not just by talking about them and reading about them, but also about singing about them. Or si yeah, singing through, um, tell telling stories through song. So, and I'm, kind, I'm like a go-getter. So if I have like a goal, I put my whole life like together to like get to that goal and make it come true. So I was like, I'm gonna be in like a musical theater star. I'm gonna go one day to Broadway and gonna like kill it over there. I always wanted to get away. I think I, I there's this one moment I can actually vividly remember when I was eight years old and I was playing outside in our on our block and I was just looking around and I was like, there must be more than this. I think I'm just gonna go away one day. And uh, my grandma, who I unfortunately never met because she died two weeks after me was my uh, after I was born mm -hmm. um, it was my mom's mom she used to live in London because she also wanted to escape her surroundings and didn't want to be the traditional housewife she just wanted to travel and mm -hmm. meet new people so she was a nurse in Camden and lived there I think for two three years and my mom always tells me these, told me these stories and I was like oh my god that's so cool I just I I always loved London when we would go on like little trips to London. So I was like, I'm going to move to London one day mm. and do musical theater because that's what I was set mm -hmm. to do. But I think always deep down inside, I felt I just, air quote, wanted to do um, music because there 
was just this 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 little fire in me like i was always imagining as a little girl like stadium crowds people singing back to you but funnily enough never really musical theater kind of dreams it was there like yeah i want to sing mm. and i don't care what stage but i think secretly i just always wanted to be a songwriter with my own stuff but i thought i wasn't good enough to go to like a conservatoire or whatever because i was really bad at music theory and all the big conservatoires were like demanding that from you so i was like you know what i'm just gonna do musical theater and maybe one day i'll i'll go back to singing maybe if i have a career in musical theater i find the time and the right people to do it and then um i got into drama school when i was 19 in amsterdam and graduated from it when i was 21 but then the pandemic hit mm -hmm. literally we had one, two more months to go until graduation pandemic hit and i was like shit how am i gonna do this because now we're living in a world that basically tells you that art is unnecessary music theater is all unnecessary because we have to think about healthcare and education and the whole economic system is going down and i was like oh shit what am i doing with my life and then brexit happened and i was like is this the universe like telling me not to go anymore because i was ready to just go with two suitcases in my hand mm. and see what happens uh but i was like no i'm not gonna like let it go that easy although it was a bit tricky because in the pandemic my grandma died from my father's side and i was really close to her i grew up with her and um and then i had a horrible breakup probably going to tell more about that later <laughs> um and i was just depressed for a few months because i didn't know what to do and then i so this was like i would say june to september october i was really like depressed and i was mm. drinking a lot i wasn't mm. eating i was just crying mm. 24 7. and then in january i was like okay if i still want to go like to the uk i need to do something now mm. because otherwise it's not going to happen so i just looked around what kind of visa i needed mm -hmm. And work visa is not going to happen because I have no experience. Yeah. Companies are not going to give me one. Super expensive to get one. Anyway, yeah. yeah. So I decided to go back to school. But I was like, oh, I don't know about conservatoires. I need something for like a, a guarantee that I'll get it. So I applied for musical theater courses in, what was it? Bristol and in Scotland. Then I got it in Scotland, right. in Glasgow at the Royal Conservatoire. Mm -hmm of scotland and it was an amazing year like we all came from the pandemic so yeah. many international students i had like two girls from china in my year mm. germany spain like was it four or five americans all in a uh, similar kind of boat yeah, yeah and it was i was so lucky with my year because everyone was amazing and motivated and professional and this course was a really good fit for me because there were loads of opportunities to do your own projects like writing a show from scratch and then we had a cabaret project where we basically could do anything we wanted for 20 minutes and we would have a full band mm. to do anything we wanted with it. And I was like, well, I got a couple of songs mm. that I wrote back in the Netherlands when mm. I was depressed and didn't know what to do. So mm. I just started writing because I was yeah. like, well, everything is going shit and I don't know what to do with my life. So why mm. not give it a shot? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then I was like, I'm just going to do it. It's just for a project. If they don't like it, they don't like it. Mm. And it will also be a good experiment to see mm -hmm. my English is good enough. Mm -hmm. If people aren't like, oh, no, that's wrong or that's weird. Mm -hmm. Or just if I have a chance in this industry, in this country. Mm -hmm. So um, a really good friend of mine, uh, Jason, he's a musical director. He helped me to arrange all the songs uh, slightly differently for the band to play them. And it was magic. It was absolutely magic. It's such a shame we only did it for one night. We performed in a little club in Glasgow. And it was magic. Like, such a good response from mm. everyone. And they all, like, came up to me, like, I'm so sorry, like, what you've been through. But that was amazing. You need to keep going. If you don't, you're going to regret it for the rest of your life. Mm. And, and everyone was in tears and so proud. And I was like, oh, wow. Like, I thought people would say, like, okay, it's cool. Or, like, yeah, keep keep going. Yeah. But it was so intense, the reaction. Yeah, you, yeah. Weren't, you weren't expecting that sort of feedback. No, not at all. Because 
I need to learn personally to have um, not have any expectations from life because sometimes I do. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to expect anything. I'm just doing this for myself. And it was just, it was crazy. And then I was like, okay, I need to do something with this. Um, so once I moved to London, because that was the plan, because I could mm. stay for a student visa for a year for my master's. Mm. And then after that year, I moved to London because I could stay on a graduate visa. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to, you know what? This school um, has recording studios. It's free now. Mm -hmm. So why not use them? So mm -hmm. we recorded the songs that I played in that cabaret in a more acoustic kind of setting with cool. a piano, an electric violin, and mm -hmm. just me um, in the studio in school. So I had a little bit of like a, a portfolio to show people when I was in London. So I was like, okay, we're going to go to London. We're going to get it all started. I'm going to reach out to producers. I have this little portfolio with songs and we'll just see what happens. Yeah. Because if I don't try it now, I'm probably never going to do it. And then I also had an agent when I moved to London to still pursue the acting thing. Mm -hmm. But then I realized after I think the third breakdown in like two months, like this is not me. Okay. I can't do a full time music career with a full time acting career. And also working part-time slash full-time to pay the bills. So I need to pick one. And music came really organically for me. Mm -hmm. Because when you have an agent, you're basically just waiting. So you get a phone call or a text like, hey, you got an audition, you got this. And I don't like waiting. Yeah. I want to be proactive. Okay. So I just already started doing it. I had so much fun. And even though I was, it was nothing mm -hmm. in the sense of like, loads of experience or um, loads of connections. I had just so much fun. Mm -hmm. And I felt like uh, my songwriting was growing, was getting better. Mm -hmm. My connections were expanding. And I was like, and from acting, I didn't get anything back. It was always like, thank you, next. Mm -hmm. And that was another thing for me that I was like, you know what, I'm gonna stay on the music path because it feels good. And I think this is what I'm supposed to do. Cool, yeah. So I think taking from that, mm -hmm. I mean, the last section in particular. So now I've understood you've gone through the process of um, acting and, mm -hmm. and all that and explore those different yeah. avenues. But the thing that strikes or has struck a chord with you mm -hmm. is songwriting and then having that feedback where you went, OK, there is something yeah. here. It does something for you and it does something for others. Yeah. And there's a big tick, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. In terms of. I mean, so it de developed with you early on as sort of just an interest in the language, mm -hmm. right? How does that today, in terms of writing, mm -hmm. lyrically speaking, work for you? Do you do you mm -hmm. think do you think in Dutch and write in English? Do you say the market is English? Mm -hmm. I have to write in English, mm -hmm. or is it just I want to write in English, or is it is it all of the above? I would say so. I started learning English when I was four years old right. uh, because my f uh, uh, family is Canadian. Mm, so, right. And we would have, of course, would like to visit them and it would be handy if I could speak English. Mm -hmm. um, but also because my it's kind of common in the Netherlands that you learn at least two different languages besides your, mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. own native language, especially in high school yeah. um, and in middle school. Um, it's funny because when I started writing in the pandemic, when I was like super sad, mm -hmm. um, it was a mixture of both. And then, of course, I moved here, and then you're slowly going to, like, yeah. think in English, dream right. in English. Um, so that massively helped. And I would say now it's just English. And funnily enough, I went to New York a few weeks ago to record a Dutch song with the my friend from my master's, Jason. Okay. Uh, he made an arrangement again for it, uh, and we recorded it there with a viola, a violin, cello. And a French horn, mm -hmm. and the idea um, was that we're gonna record those mm -hmm. um, kind of orchestral kind of sounds right. with my vocals, and mm -hmm. then I come here. I'm gonna work on it with a producer okay. to mix it up a little, put some guitars in there, maybe a synthesizer, mm -hmm. put it all together. Why was it New York in particular? Why why was it over there not? Because my friend lives there that I really wanted to work with. Okay, right. Um, I think yeah, that was the main reason, okay. yeah, yeah. and. I was 
Well, when I <laughs> came up with this project, I was it was like the year before. I was working full time in a mm. shitty job, and mm. I was like, I want to do something. Yeah. I want to do something cool, and I want to do that with friends. Yeah, yeah, I understand. And I was like, so I just texted him like, Hey, are you free next year, February? Do you want to do something cool? And then we went from there. Commit, committed so, to it, and yeah. next thing you know, you're in yeah. New York. Yeah. It's a cool place. Yeah, I love New York. It's yeah, so yeah, cool. it's a cool place. Yeah. Um, well, why don't we go into some of the songs mm-hmm. that you've written? I mean, the ones that I found there was four of them that I could yeah. just find online. Um, I mean, The Witch, um, you know, as I said earlier, very ethereal it's storytelling, I think. And that makes sense from what you said earlier about language and, mm-hmm. you know, how, when you obviously translate things, you have to understand the context, mm-hmm. right? You can't just translate and it word for word. And also with them because the, I would say the main difference between Dutch and English is our our words are longer than English ones. Yeah. So it's really a little puzzle Got of you. how you're going to fill in Got gaps. You. So therefore you need to yeah. get the story right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah um, I mean, are you happy now? Or who is... Who oh, is, absolutely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I am I. couldn't be more happy. That's good, that's good, that's good. I'm definitely in a, in a huge high Good, right now. I'm glad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, going back to what you said in the, in the pandemic, I mm-hmm. think having that time where the world had stood still and you have to everybody had to reflect mm-hmm. there was everybody had a, whether they liked it or not a sort of mirror against yeah. their face and sort of and you naturally just sort of go who am i and mm-hmm. what am i doing and what is the world doing and yeah. where do i put myself in the world and it obviously is very scary but mm-hmm. it sounds like out of that you got some good realization i think it's crazy because i am naturally a very positive upbeat person so to be really depressed for a few months was such a weird experience for me because mm-hmm. i i've been of course i'm sad i'm angry like whatever but never that long in my life and it was for me such a weird space to be in because so i broke up with my ex in, mm. a, in, a, in a horrible way and i was completely obsessed with him lost mm-hmm. my identity so that when i was depressed in the pandemic I had no idea who I was in yeah. every way, not only creatively, but also almost like, what, what is my favorite food again? Mm. That wasn't that bad, but... No, I get it. Yeah, so it was really tough for me to try to find myself again without losing the things that I like about myself. Yeah. And I think for me, it gave me my passion and my drive back. Because I was like, these are the things I want to do with my life. Mm. And yes, life is making it harder on me. But I, you, my mom always says you always have a choice. Yeah. So what am I going to pick? Am I going to be here and, and, and like stay in the Netherlands, be sad and just accept the universe just telling me it's not going to happen? Mm. Or am I going to fight for it? Yeah. And I chose to fight because it, I knew I would regret it. Mm. And it also felt like the perfect opportunity because when I auditioned for drama school, normally you have to fly over. I actually did it a few times in London when I was like 17, 18. Mm -hmm. I would fly to London alone, do auditions for drama schools and then come back. And now everything was online. Yeah. Which is great because that means if you have to film something, you can redo it until it's your best take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same with dancing. Dancing has never been my strongest one out of three like singing dancing and acting mm-hmm. but now you're in front of a camera so you can redo it you can you can manipulate kind of the Understand. situation yeah, yeah. which is great so it worked out for me i'm honestly not sure if there wasn't a pandemic and i would fly over if i actually got in yeah and that was my way to get in and it i it was just something i had to do also because i secretly always dreamt of going to a conservatoire yeah because I got rejected so many times from drama schools that it was almost like an obsession. Like I want to be in a conservatoire and then I just let it go and then yeah. it happened. It's funny, isn't it? How when you don't try, yeah, sometimes these things just happen for you yeah. in a weird way. But then again, obviously, I, I'm not saying not to try in general. Mm. You obviously have to no, make, you have to I make the you have to sit there and be lazy yeah. and procrastinate, and uh-huh. people obviously don't come to your door and knock on your no. door. Oh, absolutely not. So you have to do it in the world, but it's it, it's almost like uh, when you chase something, it runs away. Probably because yeah. you're not ready, right? It's normally the case absolutely. you're not ready, you're not experienced enough, or yeah. But then I think what happens is I don't know if you agree, but we tend to translate the rejections as we're just not good enough. Oh, absolutely. And it, and I think as creative people because from our point of view we are opening ourselves up to the world mm-hmm. right 
in this form of songwriting or might be something else creative too mm -hmm. and it's a very vulnerable insight into who we are and then people whom we need help from let's say mm -hmm. say no oh and yeah. then we're like what what happened from there yeah. so i mean how do you with rejection mm -hmm. and with disappointment mm -hmm. i know you said you have this internal drive is it a case if you get knocked down you take the blow have a chat with yourself get back up or is it just you just push it all aside and just steam on ahead or do, you, or do you take feedback uh, in and say i actually maybe mm. they were right i would say it depends like mm. i've been auditioning for things or and dealing with rejection since i was like 10 years old right i was one of those kids who just went to these massive auditions for like television for wow. shows in the netherlands singing competitions like i was so for example the voice is a dutch concept and when they were doing it for the first time for kids, I was one of the first probably right. who signed up. Right. I did all those things because I just wanted it so bad. And then I was kind of fine with the rejection from the show because I never got on it. Never really got started you got, you get to the round. producers, don't you? And then they like, yeah. say And no. then I also very quickly realized what TV is about. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, re I remember before my audition, they got me in a little room to do a little interview. And they were asking me what the worst thing that what the worst thing was that ever happened to me, and I was like, I'm ten years old. Mm, yeah. I'm sorry, but does someone need to die? Like, well, what what kind yeah. of answer would you want? That's what Are you that's trying what to get out for. of me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're looking so, for a sub story to sell. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. I thank God I realized that very quick, mm -hmm. and I would say over the years dealing with rejection, it, it's growing on me. But again, it depends on the project. Like, it's something mm. I really wanted it. I can still, like, cry about that and yeah, have a yeah. breakdown. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not a massive one. Um, yeah. But, like, for example, the other day, I had an audition for a singing waitress job in the West End in a, in a, in a, in a, in a bar. Okay. And I was like, oh, easy. This is going to be an easy one. I'm a good singer. I know I can perform. Mm. I'm just going to kill it and get the job. And that's yeah. going to be great because the pay was great. The yeah, hours yeah, yeah. were all right. But, hey. And then I didn't get it. Mm-hmm. And I was so angry yeah. because I was like, I'm great. Why, why don't they see it? And I know why I didn't get it because I thought it was an easy one because things aren't as easy as you think. And I was also like kind of punishing myself for it because I was like, this is an easy job. This is not hard and you can't even get that one. Like, what the fuck? Like, why are you like my, my, my head was just messing with me. Yeah. Um, but what I always try to do is to reflect on things or put them out of context. Or when I'm really upset, I'm like, okay, it's fine. Nobody is dying. You're okay. You're healthy. Your family is healthy. Mm -hmm. You'll find another thing mm -hmm. because this yeah. wasn't meant to be. Because yeah. I believe that everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. okay. So I try to tell myself that. But of course, it depends on the project, how easy or difficult that can be. Yeah. Yeah. Perspective certainly helps yeah. and then i think if you're putting certain expectations uh, yeah. as well on these things and then that means pressure as yeah. well and yeah it's it naturally i mean it's it's a twofold thing isn't it i mean if you went through life and you never took feedback mm. then you'd never grow no um because no. we do need to have we bounce things off the wall mm -hmm. don't we bounce things off people and others and as we spoke a little bit off camera too about people who are higher up in the industry mm -hmm. let's say who have no dog in the fight and they and they they're more likely to help you than others mm. perhaps too um yeah it's it's tough isn't it so yeah. we we don't know what we don't know and we do need to grow and learn and take things on sometimes but at the same time the thing that we're doing again it's it's very personal isn't mm -hmm. it and we're putting it out when you i mean singing is not it's it's your voice yeah it's, it belongs to you yeah. it's your thing isn't it and others are you know they have to judge it and critique it and, mm. and say no. And sometimes they don't have to say why. And, and Oh, that's the thing that horrible. kills me the most. Yeah. They, they don't tell you why. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm like, I'm a grown-up. You can tell yeah, yeah. me anything. So, but sometimes they don't like, know I why. I take it personal. Sometimes they don't know That's why. actually what I've heard a lot. when yeah. I Because most of the times I would ask for feedback. Yeah. And most of the time it's just like, you really are amazing, but yeah. just not for us. Yeah. Or um, maybe in a yeah. few years. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, which is frustrating because I'm very impatient. If, if they say that, it's so, almost it's yeah. like a yes but no. Yeah. And then you think, well, if I'm good enough, 
you know, in a couple of years, I should be good enough now. Yeah, and I'm like, if you see the potential, why don't you hop on that train and, like, see where it goes or when to it, support yeah. that? Yeah, I get I, it. I, I, I don't get that. It but d- I guess it depends, like you say, on the context of it. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, a lot of these people that, you know, tends to working in a bar, it's a business, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you wouldn't start in a business that wasn't making money yet because yeah. you think well let's come you think i'll apply when you're more mm-hmm. established because it's more of a guarantee etc they sort of see you the same that they see as Which a I product guess. but then they? on the other hand i'm like so the music i listen to is mainly from like the 70s 80s yeah, yeah. a few contemporary artists mm. but not really mm. um and then i'm like but back in the day you just sang in a bar yeah. someone would be there would be there to manage you because mm. they wanted to be part of the next big thing yeah, yeah. and that's nowadays i feel not really happening anymore they want security which i get of course we're coming out of a pandemic yeah, yeah. You, you you really don't know what's going to happen like any uh, any given moment with this economy yeah, yeah. just po- politics so do and you stuff, think do you think it's gone too much the other way where it's too saturated yeah then? like you say in terms of you know, I think I think we only hear about the success stories, don't we, in the sort of yeah. 70s and 80s. You know, yeah. take Queen, for example. They sold their van, took all the money, went mm-hmm. into a studio, and they just happened to be to bump into another producer. Yeah. And it went from there. And that's obviously what you had, to, you had to do. And as you said, they would go to bars and look for the next best thing. But then maybe they would look at 10 people and only one would work out. Mm-hmm. But you never hear about the nine. Yeah. And then maybe going back True. to today, it's quite saturated, where you've just got so much online social media and everyone everyone's a singer mm-hmm. now and everyone's yeah. an artist and everyone's this or a home producer yeah which yeah, yeah. I, in, a, in a way i totally support that because yeah. music should be available to anyone yeah, yeah. for the creativity in it but it's also a bit like how who's you, gonna pop up next who d- how do you cut through the noise yeah that's the question exactly. isn't it how, yeah. do, how, how would you say and that still you be yourself because i don't want to be a oh. sellout and do things that i don't agree with just to get attention yeah yeah because that's not genuine no, and people exactly. people do see through it and then you don't want to be, you don't want to be a firecracker, do you? you oh, don't no. just think that's kind of the end of it. So, how, I mean, how would you say, you know, uh, this is how I'm going to cut through the noise. This is what sets me mm-hmm. apart from other other artists. It's funny. I went to a networking event mm. uh, for women in the industry, um, and they were asking about, um, like. Um, the thing that makes us unique is like a unique selling point. And I just yeah. hate that word. Yeah, yeah. Um, because mm-hmm. I always struggle with it because sometimes I'm super confident about it or not yet mm. figured it out. But um, I would say, but of course, I don't know the industry in over here as, mu- as good as I know it back home. Mm-hmm. But what I would say, I have very honest lyrics mm-hmm. and direct. Mm-hmm. And I feel like... I'm not trying to make them poetic because I just want to tell my truth from my perspective Mm -hmm. and kind of invite people to do the same. Yeah. Like, I don't really believe in taboos. I think we should talk about everything. And I think that's what makes me unique. And I'm trying in my performance to refine the things that make me unique. Mm -hmm. Like my organic movement when I perform and now I'm trying to find a way in like almost like a costume or in an outfit that can be like my thing mm-hmm. so it highlights a little bit more mm-hmm. um but i also don't it, it's 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 a weird balance because i also don't really want to force it and just let it happen and see how i feel about it mm-hmm. about it um but yeah i feel we need more conversations mm-hmm. in society about different topics and i'm a bit advocate for that again for like just telling the truth from your perspective of course with respect yeah yeah um but i truly believe if you approach someone with respect and tell them your truth from your perspective mm. it would be weird if they get like annoyed by that or angry because it's just your perspective and it's then on them if they are offended by that what would you do to avoid those regrets and what regrets would they be i don't have many regrets because i don't well actually it's funny i don't really believe in regrets but i do believe in them in a way that it drives me not to have any Mm. um it's another thing my mom always told me make sure you don't have any regrets just try everything you can because that's what's life for i would say at the moment the only regret that i have is not doing music earlier Mm. but then on the other hand i'm like i needed this journey to get where i am now and i'm so content even though i don't have millions of streams 
or I'm not playing at, I don't know, um, the O2. I'm so content with my life right now. That's good. So many things that I always wanted came true, like moving to London. I have an amazing partner, which is very fulfilling after so many struggles in my love life. And I know myself so well. And I always had this very, um, I think it's part of my impatience in this, but as a kid, I was, I was very bad at sleeping or mm. going to bed because my head was just spinning and spinning and spinning with ideas and I felt restless, I think at least the first 20 years of my life. And ever since I moved here, I feel way calmer because this part, almost like check, like yeah, yeah. tick the box, it happened. So I feel more calmer. I'm very content with my life right now and I can't wait to see what's gonna happen next because life can change in a blink yeah, yeah. and i love that about life but it's also scary about life but that's i guess just to you have to figure out how you're going to live with that and so the one regret i have like i said is that i didn't start music earlier and mm. i try to tell myself this is your way yeah everything happens for a reason mm -hmm. it's okay but it's hard sometimes especially um, it's funny, I have a new song coming out in May and it's called Old and it's about how I already feel too old to do this and I'm right. only 25. Okay. Um, because every time when I go to an open mic or I do a show or I discover a new artist or people are talking about it on the radio, they're all like 20, 22 and then I'm like, fuck, I wish I started earlier because then I wouldn't then be there in my career as well when I was that young and I would make more of my opportunities. And what if, what if, what if, basically. Yeah, yeah. So I'm j really trying or to use it in my art with that song. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny because I talked about it with so many, especially female artists who are struggling with this. But it's, of course, a thing because, hey, nobody likes an old woman, but old men are, like, sexy and... and well, I don't know about that. Right, I mean, no, so. no one wants to see an old, you know, dad-bodied singer-songwriter up on yeah. stage talking about his breakups and, and all that either, to, yeah. to a point. But then again, yeah. look, I mean, you know, I can, there's lots of examples of other singer-songwriters who have made it, and they are... And they started when they were 32, 33... Yeah, there's this famous story about a singer-songwriter in the Netherlands. He has been in the business for, I think, at least 20 years, just doing weddings and playing in bars and stuff. Mm. He had a he had a record a, a contract, like a record deal. Mm. Didn't work out. He and then in, he yeah. wrote one song that just blew up yeah. in like the biggest way yeah. possible. And he's playing all the big festivals, I'm always right. telling myself. Yeah. He had to wait 20 years. Well, maybe you too. Yeah. But just try to take your time. Yeah. And yeah, be yeah. patient, but that's I would say that's my biggest enemy. And patience. you could you could say with, t with that example of that guy without him having those weddings mm -hmm. and without him being dropped on the label, he wouldn't have written that song, which then wouldn't exactly. have taken off. So yeah. it's it does come it does come around and it obviously makes yeah. up your your journey and your story. But you are I agree with you in the sense of you d it, when you do see people who are maybe younger than you, etc., mm. etc., et we, you look at them and think they have more time than me, mm. they have more energy than me, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But then I think the way to spin it, you know, is to say, well, that's it's good that I look at them in this way because it's a reminder of that I need to get going mm -hmm. and do what I need to do. Yeah. But then you need to also say it's I'm more experienced. True. You know, so. True. There's a story stories to tell. Yeah, there's a, there's a, yeah. a story that I like, and I'm not going to give you the long version, but it's uh, it's called the uh, it's one about the two axemen. Have you heard this one? No, I don't think so. All right, two axemen go to work every day, chop wood. Yeah. One guy chops wood, okay, uh -huh. and makes more wood than the other. Yeah. The other guy says, "Hang on a minute, I work longer hours than you do. Mm -hmm. I don't take a lunch break. How is it that you make more wood than me? Yeah. Even though you disappear on your lunch break." And yeah. you don't work as long as me. Mm -hmm. And the guy said, do you know what I do on my lunch break? I sharpen my axe. Mm. So I think you can work very hard as well mm -hmm. going in the wrong direction. Yeah. But as long as you're doing the right direction with the right people, because mm. it's not about how, as we said, again, off camera, it's about who, right? Yeah. And these people will help you and they'll get you there. And you just don't know. Mm. You don't know what, who and how it's going to happen, yeah. but it will come. Mm -hmm. As long as you keep going and you, yeah. you show up for yourself and show up, you know for others too i think mm. um so yeah and just i think keep the faith isn't it at the end of the day yeah you have to keep the faith and also reminding myself like 
Sometimes I just, just, just ask myself, what are you going to do then? Go home and just work in an office? Like, what's the plan then? Yeah. And then I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. Okay, well, then you just keep on going. Mm-hmm. So what, um, what are you looking to achieve then? What would be the ultimate goal? Well, let's say mm-hmm. if, that, if that achievement happened, mm-hmm. you'd be like, just kill me now. I'm done. <laughs> That's like, I'm done now. Uh, like, well, I would love to go on a European and UK tour. Um, like I said, I'm a very goal, uh, like go-getter mm-hmm. uh, goal mindset yeah, yeah so i would love to do that in five within now in five years yeah that's so perfectly with a full achievable, band yeah. and stuff mm-hmm. um i always say um that i would love to record a christmas album one day because i love big band music wow. and when i was a kid i thought that jazz music was christmas music yeah yeah so that you can only play it once a year and then i discovered oh it's just a genre it's not just yeah, for yeah, christmas just this for christmas, music yeah, so yeah. i just love i think that's the little theatrical me that's still inside of me that just wants the glitz and the glamour and just the warmth of that music because i love warm sounds Mm. like every time when my producer's going um like it's about to do my masters or a mix i'm always telling him make everything as warm as possible okay because i just love again warm sounds yeah so i would say christmas album uk european tour i would at least would love to record five albums because then I can also a little bit experiment a little because I love country music and mm-hmm. Americana, which is on the, on the absolute rise right now, um, which makes me really happy because when I started loving it when I was like 14, so that's like 11 years ago, no, everyone was like, why do you listen to country music? That's weird. Like, don't do that. Dixie Chicks were good. You know, they were, they, I they were good. Love I love them. I love them. They were them. good. Country, country's always been, maybe not in Europe per se, but definitely in America, it's always been yeah. a massive, massive thing. So I many. just love the storytelling of it. And yeah, just, yeah, that's right. That's what it's about. It always calms me down. Yeah, when yeah. I feel overwhelmed, just listen to country music and it brings me back on my mm. feet. Mm-hmm. It's just... You know why that is, right? It's just magic. You know why we listen to sad music when we're sad? Do you know, yeah. do you know why? Empathy. Yeah. They, we relate to each other mm. through music and go that's i feel that way therefore that you know they understand how i feel yeah. and then it brings us down mm. it's quite a funny thing isn't it you would think when you're sad i listen to happy music but people don't they just go straight for the mm. i've had a breakup put adele on it's yeah, just, yeah 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 she gets it she makes me feel better exactly exactly and then one more thing to round up this question yeah, 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 i yeah, would love to open for um like a big artist mm. on like a world tour yeah like i I love Casey Musgraves. That's one of the mm. more modern artists I really listen to. I would love to open for her one day mm. on tour. Mm. Or one of my biggest inspirations musically and lyrically, just as an artist and a human being, is Maggie Rogers. Mm. I would love to open for her. That will be such an honor. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah. So I guess if, if I can do that... Oh, and I buy a house. I know it's very, it's very <laughs> I know it's very traditional, but I just, I just Let love g- those shows on yeah. television where they're like re um, Look, construct do, do, those houses do and the stuff. Tour, do the tour first. Yeah. Then get the house. Don't get the <laughs> then, house first because no, you won't leave the house. It's a waste of money. Yeah, your, the dream would be dead then. Just, just. No, you I want to like. Yeah, yeah, do that house. first. I would love that. Sounds cool. Like All a right. Little studio in the basement. And Fantastic. Stuff, so, yeah. Bean, it's been great. Thank you for joining me on this second episode of In Time Sessions with myself, Nathaniel Borden. Woo. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to bring uh, your lovely guitarist, uh, Chris, Yay. to come to come on and join us. Um, but we'll take a quick break and then we'll, we'll crack on and do two of your songs, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which, which songs are they going to be? Uh, it's got to be The Witch and Clouds. The Witch and Clouds. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. All right.
You have been listening to In Time Sessions with Nathaniel Borden on Islington Radio.